Hello, everybody, and a warm welcome to our afternoon session um, on our innovation hub of food biotechnology and circular economy. My name is Christoph Griesbeck. I am the innovation hub coordinator, and I will guide you through this afternoon. And with uh, this next 90 minutes about, we will discuss the most important aspects of this innovation hub, what it's all about and what is the major goal, what are our tools and actions for the next three years. And together with my colleague Andreas Walter and some more colleagues, we will present you some major um, ideas and the most important things to come within the next three years in this innovation hub. So in uh, this afternoon, we will discuss in the first place a uh, kind of a short introduction given by Andreas uh, about the major aims and the persons, the general scope of this innovation hub. And the next step, we will come to the uh, field of mobility. So mobility, not only in physical uh, terms, but also in a virtual way, how to exchange students and exchange stuff. And this means not necessarily you travel somewhere else, but it can be also include some virtual uh, online lectures or exchange activities. So afterwards, we will come to the point of infrastructure. So what kind of uh, research activities and centers can be uh, uh, implied with this renovation hub. And, and the last part of this session, we will discuss the, discuss the options of uh, research and common research project of all the partners in Olysseus. So I hope afterwards, after the session, you are all excited to be part of this Olysseus uh, Alliance and you will be happy to join research projects and you will, I'm sure you will be happy to join some common activities. So we will together bring this ship to sail and we will uh, really uh, open new horizons for this really interesting uh, and nice and perfect alliance. So, um, I end here for the first place now and hand over to my colleague Andreas Walters, who is the Innovation Hub um, co um, officer. Sorry. Hello to everyone. He will tell you more about this Innovation Hub and what it's all about and all the major goals. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Christoph. Also, big and warm welcome from my side. So, before I started working for the consortia, it was in February this year. Even for me, it was a little bit unclear what it means to be part of the community. So maybe before I start uh, introducing the hub itself, a few words on the community, on the Ulysseus community, especially for those who have missed the morning sessions today. So what does it mean to be part of Ulysseus? It means to be somehow connected to one of the six partner universities. So namely Hagahele in Finland, Genoa in Italy, Cotosu in France, Sevilla in Spain, Tuca in Slovakia, and the MCI in Austria. So to be a student, to be a researcher, to be an employee of the university, or even an entrepreneur or a citizen of the region. All these universities hold one innovation hub. For instance, Haga Helia hold artificial intelligence. And these innovation hubs are innovative joint structures to facilitate collaboration within the Ulysseus community. They will be centers of co-creation processes within the community. They will also be centers of research and knowledge transfer and promote citizen engagement and European values. The MCI is responsible for the innovation hub, food, biotechnology and circular economy. So what is our scope? The big field of Bioeconomy is in the spotlight. So to use biotechnology, biotechnology applications for a sustainable food production and a circular economy. Maybe you remember, it was just, uh, I think it was 11 days after von der Leyen's inauguration in 2019, when she announced the big European Green Deal and declared Europe being the first climate neutral continent in 2050. This European Green Deal consists of manifold action plans. However, I just picked five of them as shown on the next slide and we'll discuss them in detail. Namely, transition to a circular economy, 
It aims to reduce pressure on natural resources by announcing initiatives along the entire life cycle from raw materials to the products. Waste should be prevented and resources should be kept in the EU economy. A zero pollution Europe aims to secure a healthy ecosystem and a healthy environment for all Europeans. It intends to better prevent and remedy pollution from air, soil, water, and also from consumer products. Farm to fork for a sustainable food production, a sustainable food processing and distribution, a sustainable food consumption, as well as prevention of waste and food loss. A modernized and simplified cap meaning common agriculture policy to build up a sustainable agriculture. And last but not least, carbon neutrality by 2050, probably the most important goal of the European Green Deal. By reduction of 30% uh, uh, from the 2019 baseline means about emitting less and absorbing more. Despite the Corona pandemic for Europe, the Green Deal is and will remain in priority, said Franz Timmermann in front of the EU Parliament. If we invest hundreds of billions of euros in rescuing our economy from this pandemic, we must not throw money to the old economy. We must guide our society to a cleaner and healthier future, one that our children can embrace with hope and not with fear. So I think I'm not overplaying when I promote food by technology and circular economy being key areas to become Europe's first climate neutral continent by 2050. However, researchers are in need to face and also to tackle all the challenges I've presented the slides before. Some of these challenges are also global super challenges of the 21st century. Above all, our hub is addressing sustainable and safe food production, natural resources in agriculture and marine environments, bio-based raw materials, as well as biodegradation for sustainable circular economy and bioeconomical aspects. However, more fields could be addressed in future. As I mentioned before, for me, the Innovation Hub is more than a structural element. As a biologist, I would say, uh, in Innovation Hub is more an ecosystem which is growing and developing and which offers habitats for citizens, for university partners, for regional and regional and local governments, as well as for businesses, with the goal to build up competences, to foster social responsibility and citizen engagement, to foster research and knowledge transfer, as well as education, and to facilitate mobility and international outlook. Our Innovation Hub board consists of, for sure, Christoph and me, as well as Katrin Bach and Werner Stadelmeier, head of department and studies, as well as Marco Ruprich, an entrepreneur from Austria and student repres representatives. However, uh, our intention is also to involve other universities, other partner universities. So we keep our, our eyes open for new members one of each partner university who could and should join our board. We are meeting once per month to actively shape the Innovation Hub. So if you are interested, please don't hesitate to contact me. So to clarify our goals, uh, by 2023, each Innovation Hub should count on a research center, an incubator, a living lab, open classes, as well as EU projects in form of Erasmus and Horizon project. Christoph, please. What could all this mean in detail? So what are our really actions within the next few years? And as I told you before, we would start with uh, concrete ideas and actions in terms of mobility. So the first topic today um, is mobility. And this means we will discuss some actions of student exchange of some double degrees, of some uh, future options of multiple or joint degrees. And as a first step, I will present you uh, some examples. So one example, uh, which is already uh, in action. This is a double degree 
between the University of Genoa and MCI. And I'm really happy to have the heads of the study programs, the coordinators of the study programs here, the both professors, Marco Foster from Genoa and Werner Stadelmeier from MCI. And before these two colleagues uh, will start to, um, to present you uh, the ideas and the background, we will have a student who uh, has already uh, done this double degree option and he will tell us about what was the meaning and the idea for him. Our head of department told us. Holding a degree in, in my home country as well as in a foraging country is valuable and shows international experience. And also uh, holding a double degree is more prestigious than a single degree, so this was a big motivation for me. Uh, the double degree started in autumn 2018 and lasted for one year in Innsbruck. The following year was one year in Genoa and then one more semester doing my master thesis. Uh, the proximity to the Mediterranean Sea was a pleasant experience and also the, the environment in the university was very welcoming to international students with their international events. Probably the biggest challenge for me and my colleagues was the, the examination modality and the uncertainty of, of not knowing the professors. However, it was a challenge we we grew up on. Besides the challenging university, I really like to go for a swim after, after a day of lectures. Yes. Going, going a, a year abroad is, is beneficial on many tiers and if you have the possibility, I can only encourage you to do so. So I'm very happy to have Marco and Werner today here in our board and our session. And so we will just discuss a few words about this program and how it started and what was it all about. So um, what was the initial motivation? So maybe this question goes to, to Marco. What was your motivation to install this kind of double degree and what was the background? Thank you. Thank you for introducing me. It was really a pleasure to, to see once again Hans, uh, who, who was a student of mine uh, when I was a professor of SORA and geothermal engineering in Genova, as, as well as the coordinator of the Master of Science in Energy Engineering. I mean, talking, the, mo the one motivation was related to the fact that the, the Master of Science in Energy Engineering in Genova was uh, complementary to the, um, to the uh, educational offer in, in Innsbruck. And uh, this, I mean, we, we have been lucky to, f to find um, a, a, a very good opportunity for matching and integrating our uh, educational offer at, uh, um, at the level of Master of Science. And also, of course, we are a neighbor country and uh, my personal interest uh, in the, the region of the Alp, uh, to be honest, uh, was very high. Uh, I had found very nice people immediately in MCI. And uh, for example, Marco Ruprich, who is in, uh, here with us again, uh, and uh, happy about that. There is a picture of him with me in, in our website. Uh, and uh, I have to mention, of course, uh, Daniel D'Assisi, in, uh, at MCI, so I mean, was was sort of natural from since we, uh, as the University of Genova and Master of Science and Energy Engineering, we are very interested in international collaboration. Also, from my personal experience, um, since I was a, a student or a PhD student, uh, I traveled abroad in foreign research centers. So it, it was a I, I had a great great time. At, 
uh, when, I, when, I was, when I was a student um, and um, regarding my international ex experience uh, in, in foreign countries and, and in European ones. So could you see some maybe challenges in the installation of this program? Or that were there some, some hurdles maybe or some things to overcome? I mean, I have, a, I, have the, I have the experience of a couple of double degree programs, and now I'm involved in, in an additional ones as the rector's delegate for the international study programs. And, and to be honest, I did not find any great problem in organizing the, the program with the, the, the MCI, MCI colleagues. I mean, I'm not trying to, to get your um your beneficial uh, uh, mood against me but i mean it was it was quite quite easy especially especially because we we our two study programs uh, were well uh, i mean were well matching uh, and uh, while keeping uh, some in individual uh, um, peculiarities i mean for example in genova Energy engineering is more addressed to uh, smart grids and solar, and uh, while uh, in uh, in Austria the, the program is more addressed, for example, to uh, the conversion of the bioenergy, which is something uh, which is to some extent missing in in the offer of Genova. So there was a a, a good compatibility uh, between the two study programs. And, and good people willing to to, uh, to 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 work in this direction. So maybe this can be considered as a really major point to find some people matching and uh, being able to work together and to have really a, a matching way of of how to deal with some projects and to do uh, to deal with some double degrees. So I think this is a matter of people of, of what do you think? Yes, yeah, yes, sure, sure. Uh, starting with people is, is it's fundamental, of course, for uh, for a good success or a great success. And I believe that the, even if we are working on on a, on a small number of students, uh, in mobility for our choice, this uh, uh, double degree program was a success. And I believe that um, all the students are uh, are very happy uh, about uh, their experience uh, and the knowledge uh, they they gained uh, during uh, this um, period uh, at the two universities. Mm -hmm. And how did you find each other? So how did you find out that MCI is appropriate partner for you? Or maybe I mean, to be honest, it was MCI who, who found uh, me personally, and uh, one day I uh, I received uh, an email from uh, your uh, Daniel Dassisi, and we started uh, to 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 be, to discuss uh, and to talk almost that day. I mean, uh, and so it was MCI who found uh, uh, energy engineering uh, at the University of Genoa. To be honest. So maybe a question to, to Werner. So how did you uh, see the first context and uh, what was your experience being a professor and then being head of the study program with working with this new context of double degree? So this was, uh, I think, the one or the second, maybe the first, not so a large number of double degrees so far. And so what was your experience starting this? Yes, yeah, so also from my side, a very warm welcome to all of you. And I can only corroborate what Marco said here. I think, uh, firstly, the, the most important thing is that if you want to go for a double degree like that, that you are different but similar. So you have to be different enough that it's interesting for both sides, but you have to have this common ground where you can, where you can start from. And I think this worked out pretty perfectly with, with, with Marco and his team. Uh, also, as you've asked before, if there were any hurdles, I would completely agree with you. There weren't many, so there, there weren't any from 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 uh, from your side, Marco, and there weren't any legal hurdles. I think the most difficult part coming coming from uh, from the professor side is uh, with the double degree, you lose some degrees of freedom, so you are not able to just switch around in your study program as easily as we typically do, because now you are coupled to a second study program, and this. Uh, were some things we had to we had to edge out a bit, and we had a meeting 
because we at MCI, we had electives, or we have electives, so students can choose between different lectures. And here we, we changed something, and then you obviously have to talk to your partner. Now we are changing stuff here. Let's find a new road through that. But if you have people, uh, I think you boiled it down perfectly. You need people who are in, in it with their heart. And I think on both sides, we have that. So we have Antonella and Marco on, on your side. And I think it's very easy to, to work with these people. But I think you need at least one person who's totally in it, who, who really wants to put his or her heart into this project. So it, it depends on people, yeah. Uh, we could already see that the, the student saw the advantages and saw it as a beneficial way of uh, addition to his usual study program. So what is the major advantage and addition from, from your perspective? I think the major advantage is really seeing another culture. So, so content level, I think every clever student is capable of learning content. So, so you can give them a textbook or give them another lecture, but seeing a completely different university with different approaches, different, different professors, different philosophies, different value systems. I think this really broadens your horizon. And all uh, we have now three students who finished the program and they were not just happy, they were, they were exhilarated. They were, totally nuts about it. So it was really, really, really something that broadened the horizon. It goes way beyond just, just switching around a few lectures and giving a few inputs on, on fields of expertise where you're not that good as your partner. I think this is, it, it, in the end, it's a question of values. So we share some values, but we differ in some others. And seeing that, seeing a completely different system at work, I think it, it makes you humble to some degree. So, so I talked with Hannes and I think it, it really did him good to see stuff can happen completely different ways than we do it here. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a broader perspective. Your horizon just is not as small as before. This is for me the main takeaway. Having a second, a second grade, a second title is, is surely nice. And in this hyper competitive field, you may, this may be the edge you need to get the job you want. But I think this broadening your, your view of the world is, is you, you can't pay for that. So um, meanwhile, we have some experience, or let's say you have the experience of some students having done this double degree and having the experience of how it works. So uh, what is your, uh, yeah, what, how, what would you resume from this point of view at the moment and would say like, if this was perfect, maybe other things uh, should to be, uh, to keep in mind that this can be some, some maybe difficult or what would you maybe change? Are there some experiences um, now after some time of having this degree program? Yeah, yeah. we already went through that stage. So what we changed is the electives. So we, we uh, try to, to untangle this a bit and now it's much easier, I think. Uh, one of the big problems we had, these are all small problems, but the biggest ones, the big of the small problems were like, uh, they're organized. So, so you have, for example, in our last semester at MCI, the students typically don't have many lectures. So they have the, the, the master seminar and they write the master thesis. So obviously this is not a very interesting semester if a student comes abroad. So we, we had to switch around a bit. So students coming from Genoa, they will start with the third semester and then go to the second semester because there is, there is the interesting content. There is the flash of the program. I think and Marco, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think we underwent this first round of revisions already. And in my opinion, the problem is quite good at it as it is now. So there might arise some need to change it in the future, but today I'm quite happy with what we have here. Yes, if I can add one thing that we, we had to face uh, at the beginning and uh, which is um, a, a, a little problem in, in matching the, 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 the educational offer is uh, the number of credits uh, we apply in Italy to courses and especially to the uh, thesis project. I mean, uh, for a sort of, um, let's say, uh, tradition, uh, even if uh, the uh, thesis uh, final uh, project uh, um, usually takes uh, for our students uh, some four to six months uh, minimum. When, uh, when counting uh, the, the, the effort, uh, um, when accounting for the effort of the students, um, we apply a small number of credits compared to other universities in Europe. Uh, 
those universities like MCI that correctly apply the, the correct amount of credits uh, to their final project. Because if a student is involved some four to six months in preparing the project, uh, of course, uh, its uh, effort uh, is of the order of some 20 to 30 European uh, credits. While uh, in, uh, in Italy, uh, for the, 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 the courses, uh, we apply a correct, correct cri uh, criterion for converting uh, hours to be spent for studying, uh, for the exam, and the credits. While we do not um, the same thing when uh, uh, calculating the credits for the final project. And this is our fault, our Italian fault. I mean, uh, and um, a difficulty can arise um, in matching this part of credits. But this is our fault because, I mean, for example, also we have the, we had the same problem with the, the, the um, University of Mont Blanc. Uh, the other partner of energy engineering uh, in another um, double degree program. So our our final project uh, has a different uh, value in uh, in terms of credits. And uh, fortunately, MCI let's say recognized recognized that since the beginning uh, this um, uh, this um, uh, original fault we we have in Italy, and they accepted. Uh, the equivalence between their uh, um, 30 uh, credits uh, um, value uh, with ours at 12 uh, 1. Okay. okay, thank you. So I think this one goes really to all these um, study program coordinators and the responsible persons for all the study programs here in Oliseus. So really uh, just think of installing this kind of interesting addition to your programs. I think there are so many interesting programs uh, included in one of the Ulysseus universities, and I'm sure there is some interesting uh, compound and component you can, you can add to your program and you can make really a fine addition, not only for the students, but also for your program. And maybe you can add, as we heard before, some interesting topics and fields which, which are not included so far in your program, and you can some uh, may, maybe open your program to to other electives or to to other uh, intensifying study programs. So, what do you uh, say in encouraging all the colleagues out there uh, to look for some kind of uh, appropriate colleagues and programs and uh, installing double degrees? So, who wants to start, Marco? You go first. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I mean, for us was a, was a great experience. But uh, I mean, also had the opportunity to uh, to, to teach in Austria and um, three three times for three three years. So I know a little bit also the, the how the, the, the MCI University is organized, uh, which is the level of the students. And, and um, I mean, um, again, uh, we, we we have been so lucky f in in finding uh, so many similarities. In, in, in the research as well, in the, 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 the teaching uh, uh, approach. I mean, even if in Italy regarding the exam, we are for a, another tradition and, and, um, um, oriented with many oral examinations, while this is not the case for uh, the, the other European and even uh, um, um, foreign countries, uh, I don't know, in the US uh, or in Australia, whatever. And um, but I mean uh, we we had we have many many similarities in in the in the educational approach to students and at least to engineers I mean since I know only the, the engineering aspect of the, the educational process and um, so um, I mean uh, I, I, I for for us it was it was a great experience from the point of view of the teachers but. Uh, I believe mainly from the point of view of students, not only for the ones who are in mobility, but also for the great majority of the other students that um, um, uh, receive the, the, the incoming students in their classroom. 
And if I may add on that, I think also a very big thing you have to you have to consider and, and where I think a double degree really helps uh, this intercultural exchange totally there with you, Marco. But I also think about it this way. We have lots of programs that are tailor made for our for our not so good students. So for the ones struggling, for the ones fighting, we try to help them. And the double degree program, in my opinion, at least, is partially also something that the very good students, so the top of the class students, are typically interested in and where you can attract them, where you can give them something. And to me, to some degree, it's also a reward for the best students because typically they will want into program and they will get into program. So you have something for, for your top people that you can give them and give them an outlook and tell them, well, you will have something exceptional down the road. So, so do your hardest. And I think this motivates uh, especially the top tier students further. So this I just want to add. And I want to thank you, Mark, because it's a great pleasure every year doing this double degree program with you. Yes, regarding good students, I mean, uh, uh, this was a choice uh, in the criteria we introduced in the agreement regarding uh, how to select the students. And I believe that this was the, the right choice. I mean, uh, uh, asking for uh, high marks, uh, asking for uh, a, a high number of credits uh, gained during uh, their semesters, uh, let's say at home, and then um, rules like that. Okay. I think this was a nice conclusion, um, nice insight and really interesting and inspiring, I think, for all of us who are in charge of study programs. So thank you very much, you both, for being here and sharing your experience. And I, I think this should be an exciting starting point for all the other colleagues to try to install this kind of, of double degree. So this can be the first step, installing double degrees. And then as a second step, uh, of course, it would be possible maybe to extend it uh, if possible, to some multiple degrees, for example, in terms of including some more universities. So this can be, of course, the next step if it's possible. And uh, the next step could be also in uh, starting some joint programs. And so this means really we have all the options open. And let's hope that for the next three years, we can install some more interesting options for our students. So mobility does not uh, always mean physical presence uh, in a foreign country. So it can be also uh, be based on some online um, tools like today, of course, when we meet in an online lecture or online form. And so mobility can also mean we have maybe some new ways of lecturing and maybe new ways of sharing our experience and our contacts. And so one uh, topic here in this innovation hub will be the topic of open classes. So open class can mean, for example, a uh, kind of a series of online lectures. And this is a thing we would like to install. Uh, I think within the next few months, it can be possible to start a series of lectures coming from all these six universities of Uniseus. And all these universities can share knowledge and share lecturers and uh, interesting ideas. And so we will invite speakers from every university, from academia, researchers sharing the knowledge in research, but also uh, people from industry, from politics, from NGOs, uh, maybe some entrepreneurs uh, or maybe some associations. And this program will be available for students and uh, lecturers and professors and people from all uh, of our universities of Ulysseus. And this program will be built up on our network. So this means we, of course, uh, count on you. And so we will hope to have lots of interesting topics. And so for the next few years, um, in a certain way, a new series of uh, online lectures. So this can be, as an example, like uh, already we have at MCI, we have installed a series named MCI Live Talks. And you can see just a few examples uh, of our recent talks we had so far. So in this year, in April and in June, and you can see here some uh, people coming from the company Roche or Bionorica, 
uh, Romano Brody will be here in June, for example. So this means based on our experience and of course on your experience, we would like to extend mobility to the term of online lectures who can be shared within Odysseus for all universities, for all students, all lectures. And we hope, of course, for getting interesting lectures and people from your university and to have mobility in this way. So this was the part of mobility we would, what we would uh, like to introduce today. And now I hand over back to Andreas again, and he will tell you some uh, interesting uh, detailed insights in the planned um, future structures. So uh, Odysseus, of course, will count on some innovative joint structures. And so he will tell you what this can be like. Thank you, Christoph. So beside the mobility programs as described by Christoph, the following joint structures uh, should be implemented in two years. A living lab, incubator for spin-offs, a research center, and uh, open classes. So living labs should uh, enable innovative collaboration in a real context, as shown on the right side. For me, a living lab is somehow a meeting place of public and private actors, of users, and also of knowledge institutes. So living labs will offer space for demonstration, for prototyping, testing, to encourage uh, this university company collaborations. And uh, they should also be open for the broad public. So for uh, also for students and for pupils and for sure for citizens. And as an example, for instance, we have a running cooperation or there is an existing uh, uh, living lab uh, from Argus in Innsbruck, Austria. Beside the availability of spatial resources, in form of, for instance, open lab spaces for researchers or for uh, spin-offs. It's also important and mandatory to accompany young ent entrepreneurs and spin-offs in an exchange with associated partner companies as well as with the universities. And there are uh, two potential resources we can use, the Startup Tirol and the Competence Center entrepreneurship of the MCI, which is in a building process. For sure, also a research center, it will represent uh, the, the activities, the fields of research and represent the fields of research of our innovation hub and researchers of all six university and associated partners will define its structure and activity. In a big focus should be the exchange of young scientists of PhDs which could also be EU financed. And uh, there are two existing infrastructures. One is a research center here at the MCI, the Josef Ressel Center for the production of powered activated carbon from municipal residues. And the other one is a health and life science cluster Tirol with a lot of industry partners. Last but not least, open classes. It's also important to transfer the, the information and knowledge to the broad public. So in form of physical spaces uh, for, acti for activities on events, such as the Lange Nacht of Forschung, I think everyone in Austria knows this event, or the European Research Night, which will take place this year. The seminar series was already introduced by Christoph. It's also a possibility. All the participation and collaboration with school networkers on a regional and at the same time, hopefully soon also European level. And there are also existing infrastructures which can be used, for instance, school workshops, uh, experimental boxes, online workshops and courses for school classes, such as life science interactive. Here I warmly welcome uh, Petra Stöckel from the Standardagentur Tirol. It's very nice to have you here, Petra. Um, please, Petra, uh, tell us a little bit about the activities uh, of life science in the region here in Tirol. Hello, everybody from my side. Thanks a lot for inviting me to this kickoff event. And it's a pleasure for me to introduce shortly to you our existing life science network here in Tyrol. So my name is Petra Stöckel. I'm cluster manager of this network. Um, it's called Cluster Life Sciences Tirol. And we are part of Standortagentur Tirol, so to say the loca location agency 
of Tyrol. And with a, a few slides, I just briefly would like to show you what it's all about here in Tyrol. Uh, I will shortly talk about biotechnology and life sciences in Tyrol. Tyrol has indeed a long tradition in pharma and biotechnology. So since biotechnology is here a major topic today, I would like to show you that we are already a very strong location in, in industrial biotechnology and red biotechnology. So um, as you can see here, since the 1940s, we have three major companies here in Tyrol, which um, uh, most famous among them, the, the Biochemie, former Biochemie, uh, then Sandu, nowadays part of the Novartis Group, which is really our biggest company in the region. You can see a picture of Sandu here. Um, Sandu has more than 5,000 employees in Austria, uh, most of them um, in Tyrol. So by, by that, Tyrol is really a hotspot in industrial biotechnology and also biosimilar research. This means that Tyrol is, is nowadays second place in Austria regarding pharmaceutical exports, where it has the highest R&D expenditures for pharma and biotech in Austria, by far the highest R&D expenditures with more than 200 million of euros. So this is just a picture to show you the community here. As Andreas already said, it's, it's about 70 industry partners. On the right side of the picture, the biggest bubble is, is not pharma and biotechnology, I have to say, it's, it's medical technology and diagnostics. So roughly half of the industry partners here belong to the medtech sector. But then there is also this uh, a smaller bubble, pharma and biotech with very important um, companies like Sandu. And we have also the, the research institutions in our network as members. And we have a, a small but very nice digital health community and um, quite some life science service providers. So here you get a bit of an impression um, uh, how the company or what, uh, what it looks like here in Tyrol from the industry point of view. Um, the food sector we do not really have in the network so far, I have to say, but this could maybe be a good idea for the future to include also um, the, the food companies. And it's also already my, my last slide. Um, I wanted to show you that we have a, a very lively network here already existing in Tyro. But it's not only this network, we have more than 400 innovative company and R&D partners in Tyrol from different branches, which are network, uh, which are network members here in the Standortagentur Tirol. This is from life sciences, like pharma, biotech and medtech, but also um, well-being in the wellness cluster. It's IT companies, mechatronics renewable energies and creative industries. So overall, we have six company networks and um, topics like sustainability or circular economy play a very big role in these networks too, I have to say, especially in the renewable energy sector, but, but uh, also as a growing topic in, in the life science network. Then we have the startup services via the Startup Tirol uh, GmbH. This is different startup services to support quite from the beginning and also later on to grow the business. Then we have also a lab space on our own, I have to say, the so-called Health Hub Tirol, um, which is rather is already full at the moment, unfortunately, but we are trying all the time and constantly to enlarge this, these possibilities uh, to offer more and more lab space for um, startups or spin-offs of the universities. We have a special service here in Tyrol with the welcome service, which means that um, if, if uh, for example, researchers want to come to Tyrol for living and researching in, in Tyrol, we offer some services to, um, to integrate also the families like looking for a flat, looking for a workplace for the partner, looking for schools and so on. And we have a, a very broad support service 
for relocating a business to Tyrol or establishing an, a company in Tyrol in general from the um, from different point of view, tax issues, legal issues, all that kind too. I hope I could show you a bit what we have here in place, um, mainly in the Standortagentur Tirol, but also uh, together with other partners. So um, feel free to contact us anytime and we will be here for you. Thank you. If you Thank have you. questions, please ask. <laughs> Thank you, Petra, for these uh, interesting insights into, I think, very growing and active uh, field of, of research, life science in Tyrol. Next, uh, Tatiana Heckel uh, from the International Project Office will give a short uh, overview on the workflow of, of proposing EU projects from scratch to the submission. And I think thereafter, Christoph will give an example. Please, Tatiana, the floor is yours. Um, yes, thank you, Andreas, and welcome to the session from our Innovation Hub. Um, my name is Tatjana Heckel. I am the International Projects Officer for all six Ulysseus universities, and I will now tell you the proposal process from the first idea of the proposal to the submission in our Innovation Hub. The first step is um, that we have to check the Horizon Europe work program and identify the calls. And additionally, I will send a weekly satellite projects update um, via email. If you want to be included in the mailing list, please contact me. Um, the second step is to contact the Innovation Hub officer, Andreas, for further assistance. And um, he will announce your idea in the marketplace here in B2 Match, for example. Um, the third step, on the other hand, if you find in the marketplace an interesting proposal from a partner university, you can also contact um, the Innovation Hub officer or me for further information. Um, the fourth step is that um, the Innovation Hub officer will organize a dis discussion board with the potential partners. And then you and your partners can identify the lead of the project and form the consortium. This is step five. Um, the last step is to start to prepare with proposal writing and um, of course with my support from International Projects Office. Here you can see a draft of a European proposal customized to our innovation hub from MCI with um, different destinations. And um, in the next slide, Christoph Griesbeck will show you step by step how to get from a first proposal idea to a submission of the project in Horizon Europe. Christoph, the floor is yours. Thank you for this overview and now we can come to an example and how it can work. So this one goes uh, mainly to all researchers here in this group and in this innovation hub to show you how it could work. And this is uh, at the moment, not a real world example, but it's just uh, an idea, but maybe it can come to real life. And so uh, to make it clear to you all how it could work, some uh, ideas, uh, from a call, from a uh, from a call to the proposal, and all the steps we heard before on a really concrete um, example. So um, maybe some researchers from MCI, let's say, um, read the framework um, um, uh, call, filling knowledge gaps on the nutritional safety, on the genicity, and the environmental assessment of alternative proteins and dietary shifts. And when you read this call, you can see different and possible scopes, what can be included. And this uh, proposal could or should include some alternatives uh, for protein sources, some uh, impacts of different protein types to the dietary shift and environmental aspects, that uh, nutritional aspects, health impacts of these alternative proteins. And so this could be a possible call and let's say some researchers from MCI identified this call and found this interesting. What could be the next step? So in the next step, they of course would contact Andreas, the Innovation Hub officer, and would propose that they would like to start with a proposal and would uh, look for 
uh, interesting partners and uh, build up this consortium. So innovation officer Andreas will announce this idea on the marketplace. And so it can be spread around all partners of Oliseus. So this means everyone should be or could be informed. And this could be also done by this new marketplace and by this online tool where all the researchers can put in their interests and the proposals and the ideas. And then uh, hopefully there is a group coming together and starting the discussion uh, about this proposal, about this possible proposal. So as Tatiana already mentioned, there's a weekly satellite projects update from her office. And so this means some ideas would be offered for at least 15 days within this marketplace. And so different partners can show their interest and can join for this discussion group. And the discussion group will be organized by Andreas. So the discussion board now can meet, set up by Andreas. And this means all researchers who uh, could think of being included in this kind of project uh, come together and can define if this can be a project. And for example, which fields of expertise and with methods should be included in this kind of proposal. For example, this is really just an example. As I mentioned before, this could include some experts or some methods in culture to need, for example, but uh, also some marine or uh, other algal biotechnological aspects. Uh, maybe some other protein sources from insects could be also included or from fungi. So uh, you could think of marine or other resources. And then you, of course, need some nutritional and health assessment people here included in this group, and then maybe some life cycle assessment uh, approaches. So these are the, let's say, methods or fields of expertise which should be included in this kind of proposal. In the next step, the discussion board um, organized by Andreas will try to identify the appropriate partners for this kind of proposal. And this is really just a guess from my side, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I um, apologize <laughs> if there is something uh, not correct. So it's just my view from outside what could be some expertise or what could be some, um, some methods installed in your university. So for example, you can find some people from Agahelia in the life cycle analysis field, or maybe someone from Tuke in the database approach for this uh, proposal, maybe from Genoa, about marine resources from Potosia, maybe uh, for health assessment aspects from Sevilla, maybe some agricultural aspects of this topic. So just a guess from outside, just an example, don't take it too serious, just uh, an, as an example. And then it turns out then for this proposal, we need all this, or some of these different aspects and methods and fields of expertise. And this, this maybe could end up in a consortium. So um, Ulysseus proposal does not necessarily include all six universities, of course. So it's, um, of course, it should be at least two partners, uh, the more the better, of course, but uh, not necessary to include all six partners, but maybe we find three, four, five different partners from universities in Ulysseus, and they can uh, contribute their knowledge and their field of expertise uh, to this kind of proposal. And so hopefully after some discussion, the discussion board can turn into a consortium, a real consortium. And then the next step, of course, it's necessary to define who takes the lead of this proposal and then the consortium is formed. At this point, Tatiana again comes into play. And so this means the International Project Office will assist and support in terms of um, how to write and uh, to, to think of all these important aspects of writing a proposal. And so this consortium can start writing uh, this proposal. So it's just as an example how it could work. So let's hope uh, this really comes to life and all the researchers here included in uh, Ulysseus uh, will be uh, excited to look for partners and to have all these new options they uh, hoped uh, to have when they entered and joined Ulysseus. So maybe I have to add that 
uh, for a successful proposal in the Horizon program, of course, you need the appropriate people and groups and expertise of you, uh, in your proposal. This is uh, for sure. But uh, what I have to add to this point is the European Union really decided to fund and to uh, encourage the university alliances like Uliseus. So this means this is really a really strong point if some proposal comes from Uliseus or from any, of course, any other alliance. And this is really a plus you could have and you can add to your consortium. So this consortium is really stronger and has a, a plus uh, if you go afterwards for the assessment and reviewing process of your proposal if you come from um, an alliance. So this is just to think about that um, you can be maybe even more successful if you do your proposal in the ways of this alliance. And this means, of course, in uh, Uliseus and in uh, this innovation hub. So I hope this makes it a little bit clearer for you how this innovation hub and how Ulysseus could assist your research and your writing of proposals and to getting to, uh, to come to the, to the colleagues and to the consortium. So this was the idea to um, facilitate more projects and more funding for Ulysseus. Uh, to make it even more clear, to show you just a few um, um, aspects and ideas uh, that this group is really strong. So there was a survey among Ulysseus researchers by the end of 2020, and um, there was several seven, 700 something uh, respondents. And out of all respondents, there were 186 people, respondents, uh, who expressed their interest in uh, research activities linked somehow to the field of food, biotechnology, and circular economy. So 24% of all people responding to this uh, survey uh, showed that they can could be somehow related to this innovation hub. So this is, makes a, I think, impressive number. And this was, of course, uh, of course, just a snapshot at this moment, and this could be even more. So what you can see here is just the number of people who could be involved in research project, um, or let's say respondents from this survey. What they indicated in this survey was also a number of keywords. And you can see here from this Olysseus uh, survey for the 2020, the keywords which have been used. And so uh, the number uh, is on the right side. You can see here more than 60 mentionings uh, of the sustainable food production and processing and distribution systems, then uh, about 40 uh, of uh, the field of healthy food, then we have um, some uh, of the circular industrial systems, the so re resource efficiency and so on. So I don't have to mention all of them here at the moment, but what you can see here, that there's really a large number of people interested in these interesting fields. And so this means there is really a critical mass of researchers and people out there who are waiting really to be included, or let's say who would like to start research projects and proposals uh, in this field. So to sum up these keywords and these fields, this means Innovation Hub is of course all about the topics of food production, biotechnology and circular economy and circular industrial systems. So this could mean these major uh, topics can be made up of several minors, uh, or let's say more detailed topics, food production, for example, in the context of healthy food, in the context of sustainable production, in the context of materials, raw materials from urban or from marine sources. And of course, this is connected, uh, as we could see before, to circular ideas. So for, for example, valorization of co-products within the production of food or the food loss and waste prevention ideas included in such kind of proposals. So this means these are maybe so the major the major aspects and uh, topics which could make up some interesting research proposals and research groups within Odysseus. So to fill uh, this discussion and these ideas with some life, uh, I would like to introduce two researchers uh, here in this uh, field of food biotechnology and circular economy. 
So I'm happy that Katrin Bach is here. So she's heading the research group of food technology uh, and biotechnology and Martin Pillai, who is responsible for fluids and mechanics and involved in the research um, of circular economy. And so I'm happy to uh, welcome you both here on stage today. Um, and so I would like to end up our discussion of uh, this research project with some ideas from your side and with some uh, questions and maybe answers and uh, expectations from you as researchers. Hello. Hi, everybody. So thank you again for being here today and for discussing with us these um, proposal ideas and the ways how to start the proposal and how to find the consortium and the discussion board. So um, I think you as researchers are, of course, uh, interested in finding interesting consortia and, um, and, and research groups. So what is, in your eyes, the crucial point to get all these ideas going, to, to get, this, get this started? So it's at the moment, of course, Odysseus is quite at the start. And this means we have to find the right people. We have to find who is there, who is uh, in, this, in this field, and who is, who, is, who is working in this field, and who could be a partner. So what is, in your eyes, the crucial point, how to make up a new research team for a proposal? May I could answer the question in the first position? Thank you, Martin. I guess, you know, it's a really impressive and interesting and huge possibilities that we are offered here. And um, for, at first, the first uh, hurdle is to get an overview about all the potentials and possibilities and to figure out which could be a good expert and matching partner and network partner be. And what we learned until now is that we have to contact at in the first level our innovation hub officer, Andreas, and I will do so. Nevertheless, um, one and our team member, the Verena Wiedemeyer, she's also in the audience here, has published an advertisement of our experiences in the marketplace. And I guess that could be also an option. And of course, you have to figure out if you have an idea to find out the right partner and then to contact them um, discuss the ideas and then make the decision process to establish a proper and competitive consortia. Martin, what is your, your point of view for finding your project partners? Yeah. I think this question has several dimensions. I mean, it's like the personal dimension, so how do I get a good overview of who are the best people and project partners in the end for our successful project implementation? Uh, but on the other side, some, some administrative things. So you need precise working packages to have then a potential consortium that works in the end. And who is doing then the work? And, and above all, who sees himself in a position to take the lead? So how can I find in the consortium uh, people who want to go to lead in such a big horizon call? So, so maybe not all of you are familiar with, with horizon calls, and that's not such an easy thing to handle that. Really an important point to find the right partners and to, to see Ulysseus as really a, a big option for many, many interesting people in research and finding the, the persons who are really the, the perfect fit for your uh, consortium and for, for, for your group maybe. So what do you hope to, to get from Ulysseus, or let's say, how to get from the innovation hub. So, what information, with kind of, which kind of, of service, service would be helpful in your eyes? So, so maybe I, and I can answer first. So, I think we are in the recruitment phase now. So, we have to think about who are the best people, as said before. But, but I also should know what I'm getting into with potential project partners. So. So I think Odysseus can help here a lot to link people to each other and then we can get some, some checks. Uh, what is it about? Are we are in the right position? Uh, if, should we build up a team and so on? Mm -hmm. And maybe from my experiences in the project management of some internal or regional projects, one crucial point is the contact to the funding offices and to the funding bureaus. Nevertheless, they have to proofread our idea on draft and to give a impression area on the right way. 
um, from my personal experience is um, if you lose one step, the whole journey will fail and you have to go each single step to create the idea, to find some partners, to make it specific, to make it competitive, to decide which is the ideal lead. Um, maybe from certain dimensions, it's not always the scientific best. It all, could be also some regional aspects or other way around. And then you have to give up your idea. Then you have to get an impression about how much resources you need in investment of time, investment of creativity, investment in writing. And we need assistance from the researcher's perspective on every set and every step on every level and at the end we have to need a contact bureau office contact person to bring and match us with the funding offices the european union uh, union and the uh, funding of, um, bureaus are quite competitive and we need to introduce ourselves as an alliance as an european institution as an idea and the research level on the ground and i guess the, the most bottleneck is to fulfill every single level you have to come from the ground with the specific idea and you have to grow up that to a vision you get the money as well for the vision and then you have to bring the vision back um, on the desk and create some work packages, budgets to all to fulfill all the regulatory needs. Yeah, thank you very much. I think this is really the things we need for uh, a successful proposal. So, um, of course, there could be some comments, additional comments, uh, maybe questions, uh, wishes, links from the audience and from all the other researchers here who are attending this session. Okay, so uh, uh, I was really excited about the, all the passionate uh, speeches of the um, predecessors and uh, I really appreciate the really huge effort and the previous cooperation you have, uh, especially with the MCI and uh, uh, Genoa. Uh, here at Stuke, uh, I have a small team, we are working together on uh, economic, uh, uh, agroeconomics and uh, I wanted to ask uh, to whom uh, will be the most uh, effective uh, or efficient to, to contact about the production and uh, mostly the, the data processing. Because uh, I've seen uh, in the publication of, for example, Katrin Bach and few other people, mostly uh, really the research connected to uh, like uh, physical, chemical properties and this kind of stuff, not really the economics. But uh, it's not... Uh, really the circular economics so that's why I asking thank you yeah, thank you very much for this comment or this question i think i can hand over martin not such an easy question there are more people than could be possible for that one maybe a first step would be that you get in contact with me uh, via email and then we will discuss who is the best one because i know more details to talk uh, since we could be first thank you very much okay Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's why Martin is here today, of course, and so he's, of course, the, the best match for the first contact. And so we have some people working uh, on different kinds of, of uh, these aspects of, uh, of this research. And so this means there should be maybe someone to, to best have the best match. So thank you for this, for this comment. And I, of course, I'm happy um, to, to have collaborations with Tuke. This would be perfect. So, so I have learned today too that the marketplace opportunities is a, is a good possibility to share your expertise and interests. I've already tried to find contact partners for myself and not quite successful so far, uh, but I've learned also that the database will be expanded even further uh, by Ulysses. Uh, so uh, from my point of view, it's really important that, that if you're interested that you fill out the profile as detailed as possible and as precise as possible. Because only then you can see each yeah. other. Otherwise, the, the, the potential can probably not be fully avoided. Yes, uh, maybe just to t hop in quickly here, uh, the marketplace will stay open. So please, I want to encourage you all to, to take that opportunity and get connected there. It's not only for today, it will be open longer. So please do that. It's a great opportunity. Maybe to add in the long term, of course, uh, there should be some uh, really a kind of marketplace for all people in Oliseus. So um, let's say kind of, of Tinder for researchers. And so you can look for the perfect match. 
uh, within Odysseus and that of course it is based on uh, the quality of data and quality of uh, how many uh, information is included in this database. But I think it's at the, at the starting point, it's, it's all about information and all about finding the, the people and learning who is, what, who is who and who is doing what and who is maybe the, the best match for your research. And this, I think, is a, it's a, the most important thing for the next few months to get this uh, matchmaking and uh, all this database uh, stuff working. So this is really the most important thing. And then we really can can start with all these detailed um, things of really formation of, of uh, groups and uh, consortia. We will end a uh, little bit earlier than 4.30s because, because at 4.30 there's the, the closing uh, event and so you should all have the chance to uh, for a short break and uh, getting the chance to, to be there at the closing event at 4.30 to finish this uh, session today. I would really uh, like to introduce um, the Innovation Hub board again. So I, uh, Andreas mentioned it before, there is the Innovation Hub board, which is a group of people who are in this topic of food biotechnology and circular economy. And of course, it is not an MCI project, but it's a uh, project of a uh, topic of all six universities. And of course, we need some representatives of each university um, being present in this innovation hub. And so please feel free to contact Andreas and to be part of this innovation hub board. And we would be happy to have at least one person per university uh, who feels uh, connected and responsible for this innovation hub topics and knows the university, knows, knows the people there. So it makes it easier to get in contact if there's one person at least uh, at each institution uh, who knows who is who and who knows who do, uh, does uh, which kind of research. And so this means really we want you to be a part of this innovation hub and to be active and to uh, at the end, of course, maybe write proposals or be part of uh, this kind of proposals. So this was uh, really was really an uh, important uh, part of uh, this Ulysseus game that uh, really we have partners of all universities included in this interesting innovation hub and we could uh, fill all these ideas with real life. So again, the email address, so uh, as we mentioned before, of course, uh, Andreas will be there uh, as Innovation Hub Officer and Tatiana uh, is uh, the International Project Officer and uh, of this project office. So this means we are really here for making uh, all these interesting ideas um, real and would try to fill all this stuff with life and to have a success story and have a successful sailing trip, not only for three years, but for at least 10 years or of, of course, longer. And from Katrin, uh, again, uh, here you can see her contact data email address in the chat. So uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, maybe the last words of the session, I think I uh, give back to Andreas uh, for the final words. And from my side, thank you all for being here. And let's hope for a successful and interesting sailing trip yes thank you christoph thank you thank you to all of you uh to join to join our to join our session and don't hesitate to contact me if there are any questions any comments and i hope we we stay in contact we uh keep contact and uh we intensivate uh, the the conversations thank you very much <laughs>